non-pharmacologic therapies. This slide shows the non-pharmacologic therapies for fibromyalgia. So for a long time, we've known that education, aerobic exercise, and cognitive behavioral therapy can be quite helpful for all types of chronic pain. More recently, we've seen that basically any type of exercise, strength training, stretching, can be effective. And a lot of therapies that we used to be very dismissive of, a lot of these started in Eastern therapies, acupuncture, massage, tai chi, yoga, different types of meditation, all of these therapies that are now listed in modest evidence were in weak evidence. So there's really been a fairly dramatic increase in the evidence base for non-pharmacologic therapies. And because of this, we're trying to think of other ways of getting these therapies to individuals rather than having them come in in person to be seen. So one of our group's first attempts was a simple website for fibromyalgia patients called FibroGuide. And just this website alone in a randomized control trial worked as well with respect to effect size in improving function in people with fibromyalgia as the drugs that were approved for use in fibromyalgia. And I'm not saying you shouldn't use the drugs. I'm saying this to say that if you use them together, that would probably be better than thinking of these as being either I'm going to use one treatment or the other. We now have a much better website that's for almost any chronic pain patient. It's Pain Guide, www.painguide.com. And this is being tested in a number of ongoing NIH funded studies. It's much better than the original version of FibroGuide. It gives people direct access to a number of different types of self care. It talks about diet and nutrition, reframing, relaxation, allows people to actually track some of the symptoms that they're experiencing, as well as some of the new therapies that they're trying. And it really helps explain things. This is free. We don't get anything for this. We just develop these types of websites as a public service to people that have chronic pain. We really have to think of these non-pharmacologic therapies as integrative therapies, not complementary and alternative therapies. Our challenge really is to as rapidly as possible integrate the availability of these therapies to all of our patients with chronic pain. And as you start using more and more of these non-pharm therapies in your chronic pain patients, your patients will become easier to treat because they will derive some benefit from those non-pharmacologic therapies. And we're even looking at using diet and nutrition to treat chronic pain. This is a study we published a couple years ago where we were looking at individuals that were attending a weight loss clinic at the University of Michigan. These are individuals that were morbidly obese and on a very low calorie diet to treat their obesity. But it just turns out that a lot of them had chronic pain and we started collecting information on whether that diet and the weight loss led to any improvements in pain and fatigue and fibromyalgia symptoms. And when we first published this a couple of years ago, we said, yes, there were dramatic improvements in fibromyalgia scores and pain and depression and all sorts of other things in these individuals that were put on a very low calorie diet for three months. And so in the original article, we said we weren't sure whether the improvement with diet was due to weight loss or not. But a couple months ago, we published a follow-up article to this saying that this occurred very rapidly. This occurred within a couple of weeks. Now we're pretty sure it really has nothing to do with weight loss. Weight loss does help improve pain in weight-bearing joints, but we think that the improvements that we're seeing with this caloric restriction probably have more to do with this diet either being anti-inflammatory or having some kind of independent effect on pain and other symptoms that we see in conditions like fibromyalgia. Other controversial and emerging issues in fibromyalgia and chronic pain Vitamin D levels are low in most individuals with chronic pain, but most of the studies that have been done suggest giving people vitamin D replacement doesn't make pain better. A couple studies have suggested it does, but most it doesn't. There's really been a fairly dramatic increase in the evidence base for non-pharmacologic therapies. We really have to think of these non-pharmacologic therapies as integrative therapies, not complementary and alternative therapies. As you start using more and more of these non-pharm therapies in your chronic pain patients, your patients will become easier to treat because they will derive some benefit from those non-pharmacologic therapies.